Welcome to Electron Online. Here we're going to start a series of videos on vector calculus and we're going to start with two dimension only and then later on we'll move on to three dimensions that's a little bit more complicated but at least let's visit some basic concepts of vectors how to add multiply subtract that kind of thing when we're dealing with two dimensions and once we see how that works there then it's a little bit easier to move on to the third dimension. So we're going to talk about vector notation here and also a little bit about what a vector is. Vectors represent things, especially physical quantities, and some examples of what they represent are force, displacement, velocity, acceleration, torque, momentum, the electric field, the magnetic field, and, and many, many other things. So that's why we need vectors, and the reason why we need vectors is that vectors have both magnitude and direction. As you can see here, we have an arrow on the board, and that arrow is representative of a vector, the direction of the arrow represents the direction of the vector and the length of the arrow represents the magnitude of the vector. Now, keep in mind that the magnitude of a vector can never be negative. Magnitudes can only be positive, only their direction can be negative. So when you see a negative acceleration, for example, that doesn't mean there is a negative acceleration, it just means that it's, the acceleration is in the negative direction. Now, of course, when it comes to the physical quantity of acceleration, sometimes you can think of a slowing down as being a negative acceleration as well. But the magnitude of that slowing down, that can only be positive. And so sometimes it's a little confusing in that respect. But let's here concentrate on the notation of a vector. Here we have a vector that starts at point 34 and ends at point 96. We label the first point P and the last point Q. And you see that the vector connects those two. So in this case, that vector probably represents a displacement, a distance and a direction from this point to that point. And there's a lot of different ways in which we can physically represent that on a piece of paper. If we call the vector V, then you can see when we draw a little arrow on top of it, that simply means that it's a vector quantity. Without the arrow, the arrow there, we only mean the magnitude of that vector, and we'll get into that a little bit more later. In textbooks, they usually use a bold phase V, so they print a fat V like this, and so that therefore indicates it's a vector, so these actually mean the same thing. Also in mathematic text, sometimes you'll see the two points on the xy plane, or in, sometimes it could be on the xyz uh, space, not plane of course, but space, so we have two points, you put the two letters representing the two points and an arrow on top of that, which represents the vector quantity from point P to point Q. Also, a vector can be represented by its components, as we call it. If you project the vector onto the x-axis, the length of that would be the x component of the vector V, and if we project that vector onto the y-axis, the length of that would be the y component of V. It's kind of like Pythagorean theorem in a triangle. The if this was an angle right here, the adjacent side would be the x component, the opposite side of that angle here would be the y component. So that's kind of the way you want to look at it as well. It's very synonymous to that. So we can represent the vector as being the sum of its x and its y components. And then we use this symbol right here, either an x with a little like, hat on it or a y with a little hat. I call them little hats. Of course, it's just a symbol. These symbols represent the direction of the unit of the vector. For example, the x component is pointing in the x direction and the y component of the vector is pointing in the y direction. So that's physically what it means. This means the unit vector x and the unit vector y. We'll get into a little bit more later what the unit vector is. It's sufficient to know now that the unit vector has length equal to 1 and it points in the direction of either the x-axis or the y-axis and then later on in three dimensions we'll also have a z-unit vector that points in the z-axis direction. Instead of using x and y, sometimes we use i's and j's. So it would be i, j, k for x, y, z direction. These are also unit vectors and they're synonymous to the x with a little hat on them or an i with a little hat on them. That simply means a unit vector in the x direction, a unit vector in the y direction. And these are the x and y components of the vector v. Instead of using sub x and sub y as being the x and y components, sometimes we also use numbers v sub 1, v sub 2, which represents the x and the y component of the vector v. When we use numbers, we could have more than three dimensions. Sometimes we have four dimensions, five dimensions, six dimensions, so then numbers 
make a lot more sense. But typically, if we're talking about the xy plane, we'll have 1 and 2, 1 representing x, 1 representing y. Or if we have three, compo or three dimensions, that would be v1, v2, and v3 for the z direction. Notice we can either use x or y as unit vectors or i and j as unit vectors. Also, another vector notation is have these brackets like this. Whenever you see these brackets like that, this indicates a vector quantity. This would be the x component of that vector and the y component of that vector. Or we can use 1 and 2 instead of x and y. And finally, we want to see that in this particular case, notice that the distance from here to there, to there that's 6 units, and the distance from there to there is 2 units. So you can see that the magnitude of the x component is 6, the magnitude of the y component is 2, so the vector v can be represented as this x component in the x direction plus the y component in the y direction. Or if you don't like x and y, you can use i and j. As long as you realize, you can use either one. It makes no difference really. Or you can also have numbers here to represent the magnitudes with a little comma in between. And so there we see we have the, the vector that has a magnitude of 6 in the x direction and 2 in the y direction. Now it turns out, if we write it in this, in this format like here, and the vector is pointing in the negative direction, it's okay to use a negative 6 there. If you simply flip this over and have the vector go like this so that the x direction would be neg in the negative direction, you can have a negative 6 and a positive 2, and that's how you would indicate the sign or the direction. If you want to know the magnitude of a vector, notice here again, we look at this right triangle, we look at, you know, we understand that it's similar to Pythagorean theorem, and if you see the equation to find the length or the magnitude of a vector, we simply take the square root of the x and the y component squared, or the sum of the x and the y component squared. So if you want to just talk about the magnitude of a vector, you take the vector symbol and put little lines on, on it like that, absolute value lines. That simply means I just want the magnitude of that vector. Remember, it can only be positive. Or you just write the letter representing the vector without the little arrow on top. That means the same thing. I'm just simply looking for the magnitude. And by definition, it's the square root of the sum of the squares of the two components in this case, because we're just doing two-dimensional vectors. So if you want to know what the magnitude is, you take the square root of 6 squared plus 2 squared, which is the square root of 40, which is about 6.32, which means the length of this vector right here is about 6.32. So that's the type of notation we're going to be using and looking at when we're dealing with vectors. Depending upon what text you use, they may have different symbols like this. Uh, but typically, in a mathematics book, they like to use i, j, and k for x, y, and z. They do like to use the subscripts or sometimes simply the numbers, or they like to use this notation right here. So again, it depends on the author and the textbook. But at least now, you won't be confused when you see a different kind of notation about vectors. And that's how it's done.